Become one of the elite, the confident, the courageous, the unforgettable. Join the esteemed graduates of the Badass Agile Forge, those who understand how to commit, how to be visionary, how to engage in a lifelong mastery path that will continue to pay dividends in terms of your success and effectiveness, not only as an Agile leader, but as a citizen of our world. Go to badassagile.com and click on the Forge banner to sign up for an upcoming info session, and I'll see you in the 2022 cohort of the Forge. There is one simple shift that you can make that will completely change the way that you work, the way that you lead, and the results that you get. That's this week on the Badass Agile Podcast. Greetings, team. Welcome to the Badass Agile Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Williams. Hello to all my majestic and fine-looking listeners. Thank you. I appreciate you. I love that you tuned in this week, and I hope this provides you a ton of value. This week, I want to talk about a simple shift to a service-based mindset. If you struggle with leading other people, if you struggle with inspiring your fellow human beings, if you struggle with getting the outcomes that you desire, whether that's for your teams, for your clients, or even for yourself, this changes everything. But before we dig in, let's take a moment to remember why we're here. To create an elite tribe of leaders who truly serve their clients and communities by doing what matters and what works, relentlessly chasing value and excellence like a badass. There are so many resources out there about what you need to do to be agile, but we focus on who you need to become in order to lead teams. So let's hammer down those fundamentals to create a truly unique and powerful force in this industry. If this helps you, please share this with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. And also, check us out on social media. We're on TikTok, we're on Instagram, and we're on YouTube, so be sure to meet us there. It doesn't matter where or how you serve, but you must have a service-focused mindset. I speak about this often. It's a core component of what we teach in the Forge. But until you make the shift, you may find yourself struggling with effectiveness. You may find yourself struggling with communications, leadership, or influence. Now, here's why. When you're trying to get people to do things, whether that thing is for themselves or in service of the team or the end customer, you're asking them to move. You're asking them to go from where they are right now to someplace else. Maybe you need them to think differently. Maybe you need them to behave or act differently. Either way, you're asking them to move off the spot where they're sitting in this moment and think or be something else. Here's the problem. Why would they do that? They're probably pretty comfortable wherever they happen to be sitting. In dinosaur times, we would grab a stick or a carrot and try to motivate people with pleasurable consequences or negative consequences. What we know now is that doesn't work. Not only is it not enough, but it's destructive. It creates anxiety and stress. It creates resentment. It's just no way to work. And we don't want to do that anymore. But what has never changed, what has always been true, is that if you exist in service of a higher ideal, in service of a particular cause or even a specific person or group, things become much easier. Here's why. Primarily, it moves your internal focus outside of yourself and on to the other. It is far more easy to encourage other people to do things they wouldn't normally do, to think differently, to act differently, if the end result is not strictly in service to you. Buy this mattress. Why? Because it's awesome. Well, I don't care. Because it's a great price. According to who? Because we're number one in the mattress business not interested. You want to sell that mattress. You show somebody that they can have the best sleep that they've ever had. And when they wake up from that sleep, they'll be more productive. They'll be more attractive. They'll be happier. They'll feel better. They'll live longer. They'll stand taller. All the benefits of you buying that mattress accrue 
to you. But if I'm trying to motivate you to buy the mattress because I want your money, because I want your business, that's not going to nudge you. Because why would you care? Why would you be interested in what I want? This thing's going to cost you a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks. You need a really good reason to part with that money. If all I'm doing is talking about me, what I want, what I will get, and what I'm offering, you're going to lose interest and you're going to walk away. The minute I make this about you, serving you, serving your needs, making your life better, now we can connect. Now I'm offering an exchange of value, not a request for your cash. Well, the same thing happens in the team room. Everyone in that team room of yours is trading their time for money. That simple time for money transaction is not enough for most people to jump out of bed and love their job. You can get money anywhere, and you can certainly put your time into just about anything. But if the exchange is not valuable enough, then great things can't happen. And for your reference, the simple exchange, no matter how much money is involved or how little time it costs, the exchange is never valuable enough. There must be something else. And that something else is serving a greater cause. Can you see that customer for whom you're building this piece of technology or outcome who will sleep better, who will live better, who will experience more happiness, more satisfaction, more courage, more confidence? Maybe, just maybe, this thing that you're building will shave half an hour off of their busy day and give it back to them to spend with their kids so that 50 years from now they don't have regrets about how they ran their daily lives. Maybe you believe this thing that we're building will make the world less stressful, less hateful, less divergent, less angry, less unhappy, less unhealthy. When we look at it this way, we serve not just the individual customer, not just the company that we build it for, but all of humanity. This shift as a leader makes all of your influence in conversations, all of your persuasion, all of your inspiration so much easier because it's not about choosing the right words that will move and motivate people. It's about connecting them to the cause. It's about reminding them why we're here. Why do we do this thing we do? When we're finished, what will done and done well look like? The world would be better, safer, happier, simpler, less anxious. And it's even okay to serve a financial outcome, so long as it's not yours and yours alone. We could make the world a richer place. We could make the average person more wealthy. We could put a couple of extra pennies in somebody's pocket every time they use our product or solution. This is service. So if you don't yet know who you serve, how you serve them, and why you care, it's time to take a moment to explore that. Picture the person that you're helping. Who are they specifically? It could be anybody. It's limitless. Someone who needs help finding the right physician in their area. Someone who needs to keep track of their investments. Someone who has very particular or special needs. Someone who has barriers to access to physical resources. Somebody who's struggling to find their purpose. Someone who's struggling to find their happiness. Somebody who wants to be healthier or find more fulfillment in their family and their home. Even if you work in an insurance company, you are serving somebody. And it's not just you. It's not just your boss. It's not just the CEO. It's not just the stakeholders. It's the users. It's the consumers. The company exists to bring value into somebody's life. What is that value and who is it for? Now, how does what you do every day serve that person or group? Picture them. See them into the future using your product and being happier, safer, better, more fulfilled, less anxious because you existed and worked on this product. Now, here's the real interesting part. Why do you care? Who do you serve? How do you serve them? Why do you care? Something in your history, something in your story will draw you to this particular kind of person. Maybe you know all too well what that anxiety feels like. Maybe you know what lack of access feels like. Notice I'm using the word feels like, not thinks. There's no percentages or pie charts in here. How does it feel to come up through that story of not knowing something but wishing that you did, of not having something but wishing that you did, of feeling unequal, unfulfilled, unsafe, unsure, unworthy? When you serve your fellow man, 
you are giving them a better feeling than the one they had before, plain and simple. Now you feel more certain. Now you feel more confident, more safe. Now you feel more equal. Now you feel more worthy. It almost always comes down to that. But my advice to you is whomever you serve, figure out why you care. Because otherwise, the constant resilience and grit, the persistent motion, the continual search and reach for mastery in your field will be incredibly painful and pointless because it won't feel like it makes a difference. But when you choose to serve somebody intentionally, when you decide who you were put on this earth to help, now it becomes easier to help other people find theirs. And this is so important, guys. It's not so much about how shifting to a service-based mindset will help you lead better. It is about what you can teach other people so that they too can serve and lead and inspire better. You spread this and you can change the world. But without these fundamental tools, you may find yourself always wondering, why can't we have more impact? Why aren't we more successful? Why don't we get the results that we always wished we could? Service is the key. Make this simple shift today. It's that easy. It's like snapping your fingers. So let me know. What do you think? What questions do you have? You can reach out at badassagile.com. You can find me on Twitter at badass underscore agile on Instagram at badass agile. Don't forget to check out my products and services. If you'd like to bring me into your organization so I can serve you and get better results for you and your team, don't hesitate to reach out. I look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, stay badass. Badass.